<laughs> Hello and welcome to Good News. So, what's been happening? Is it me? Or has Bono really let himself go? How much does one of these cost and how much extra would that be for one? I'll tell you what, some journalists have got weird names. Hello, my name is Lesbian. <laughs> BBC Breakfast, Susanna Reid described what her orgasms sound like. It sounds like a dwarf driving a truck without being able to reach the pedal. <laughs> <laughs> Mine are more kind of... <clears throat> Finally, this has to be the best delayed reaction I've ever seen. <laughs> So, the major story in the news was, of course, the local elections. Millions of voters have been casting their ballots. Labour trounced the Conservatives in the local elections. David Cameron apologised to Tory candidates who'd lost their seats. Sorry. <laughs> Mind you, if you think the Tories had a bad night, look what happened to the Lib Dems. In one council ward in Edinburgh, their candidate was even beaten by a man dressed as a penguin. <laughs> Beaten by a man dressed as a penguin. Good night, no. <laughs> I lost to Pingu. This guy wins my award for most literal piece of journalism of the week. A shout, a wave, and a reassuring pat on the back, followed by a few more waves and then some handshakes. <laughs> that is the Ron Seal of journalism. Now he's walking using his feet. Left, right, left. <laughs> Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, left. Bit of hopping, left. <laughs> Sky News and BBC One blew the budget on fancy graphics. So, the Conservatives are still the largest party. David Cameron comes into this election <laughs> expecting to lose seats. BBC Scotland, they went to Poundland. All the candidates who have reached that magic number are in. The big election story was definitely the battle to become London mayor. In the last couple of weeks, the candidates have lost it. Ken Livingston told us he only likes dead people. Favourite Londoner? Favourite Londoner? A no one who's currently alive. <laughs> Jenny Jones came across as a bit of a goer. Favourite place in London? My bedroom. <laughs> And Brian Paddock revealed what he shouts at the point of orgasm. Ooh, Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, there was only ever going to be one winner. Boris Johnson is re-elected Mayor of London. Are you ready? <laughs> no, is the answer. <laughs> I haven't got a bloody clue. <laughs> I didn't even know I was mayor. <laughs> Did you see why Boris's dad reckons he won? Why is it that Boris is possibly the most popular Tory in London? It's probably to do with his hair. You know, <laughs> hair, hair counts for a lot nowadays. I've still got a bit of hair, but he has more hair. <laughs> I love the fact you weren't sure that was his dad, and the second he started talking, like, oh, no, it's definitely Boris. <laughs> He's great, isn't it? Nothing to do with his policies, it's his hair. <laughs> Have you seen it? You could fit a family of barn owls in that magnificent thatch. <laughs> in fact, sometimes I look at my son and think, Oh! Sherlock Holmes! <laughs> he wasn't the only one impressed with Boris. Boris Johnson is a very charismatic guy. He's a potential leader of the Conservative Party. He's very attractive. Attractive? <laughs> no, he's not. He looks like a llama. I know why Boris won, because he's a lovable buffoon. Where's the leaflets, team? Yeah, oh, there. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I'll go and take the <laughs> He also promised that if he won, he'd reveal the nickname for his penis. It's true. Here were some of the contenders. Is it the sombrero? Is it the, the horseshoe mushroom? Is it, a, is it the, a gigantic UFO? Is it the world's biggest ever example of a half-eaten macaroon? <laughs> They're all good. <laughs> but tonight, I can officially announce the winner is... OK, um... Dr Johnson. 
Dr. Johnson. He's the one-eyed physician, and he's on a mission. <laughs> Dr. Johnson, he sounds like a pervy superhero. I am Dr. Johnson. I have only one nemesis in this world. Hello, my name is Lesbian. <laughs> we'll see about that later. I'll tell you what, some shocking health stories knocking about. Did you see this? A mother with a passion for tanning is facing a charge of child endangerment after being accused of allowing her young daughter into a tanning booth. Passion for tanning? You're probably thinking, I doubt she does it that much. Well, feast your eyes on this mess. If people get... It, it to each his own. To each his own. I like to tan. She looks like a fucking lion bar. <laughs> what is that? Listen to what she reckons her kid was actually doing at the tan shop. I'm in the booth. She's outside playing princess, trying to be like mommy. <laughs> trying to be like mum? What, is she headbutting Marmite? <laughs> Check out this wonderful bit of bullshit. When I talked with her today, she told me she did not go to the tanning salon today, and the dark colour you see on her face is makeup. Makeup? <laughs> Only if she's using this. <laughs> So, what's next? Oh, my God! Did you hear about this? A man is suing BMW, claiming a four-hour motorbike ride left him with an erection which lasted <laughs> two years. He had a boner for two years. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Well, I want to know, what was he doing to the motorbike to get an erection? Dave? That is not how you check the oil. <laughs> so what, I bet he doesn't do the school run. Who wants a lift with Daddy? A walk, a walk. <laughs> Let's hope he's never has an accident. Imagine that, lead on the floor with a massive rod on. You know the police will take the piss. Pass me that donut. Hoopla! <laughs> he's not the unluckiest bloke in the news. Have a look what happened to a man from Poland. He dumped his girlfriend, who happens to be a dentist for another woman, and then days later went to his ex's office to have some dental work done. So what did she do? Well, she gave her ex a large dose of anesthetic and yanked all 32 of his teeth. She pulled all of his teeth out. Ah! Ah! What a bitch. She's like the most fucked up tooth fairy ever. <laughs> He's now single after his new girlfriend dumped him for being toothless. <laughs> that is a tough week. <laughs> I've got no key. You still love me? No, you look like a plunger. <laughs> oh, sod, if he hears this on the radio, he'll top himself. You better smile. Here is a weird headline. A fortune teller uses asparagus to predict the future. <laughs> and I predict she lives alone <laughs> and has many cats. <laughs> Let's check out her magical powers. My name's Jemima Packard, and I'm the world's only experiment. I'm intending to try and do a prediction now for you concerning the weather. Behold the mystical, delicate way she makes that prediction. I tried it earlier, and it said what we're all thinking. <laughs> Talking of bollocks, big news in the art world. The Turner Prize nominations have been announced. In case you're not familiar, here's some of the previous winners. Well, we've had unmade beds, pickled sharks and even elephant dung. The Turner Prize wouldn't be the Turner Prize without causing just a little bit of controversy. They're not controversial, they're just a bit shit. <laughs> Look at this. Performance artist Spartacus Chetwind has been nominated for the Turner Prize for this piece, Odd Man Out. <laughs> it's like beach volleyball for goths. <laughs> 
the asparagus thinks of it. <laughs> Next up, this cheery ray of sunshine. Luke Fowler has also been nominated for his third film exploring the life of Scottish psychiatrist R.D. Lang. Darkness, desolation, life pared down to the bone. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Don't clap. <laughs> In fairness, this next one is pretty good. Paul Noble has been nominated for a series of detailed pencil drawings of Nobson Newtown. Those drawings are amazing, aren't they? So, what's Nobson Newtown? A fictional metropolis populated by turds. <laughs> People who look like turds? I wonder who could live there. To each his own. <laughs> to each his own. I like the film. The big news from France was, of course, this. France has elected a new president tonight. The socialist Francois Hollande has defeated Nicolas Sarkozy by a clear majority. Here's a tip. If you're going to report on the French elections, find somewhere quiet. I have to say, Jane, that we witnessed it back at the American elections. V Victoria Beckham. The American elections. Rihanna. Elections. Yeah. I love you so much, Victoria! <laughs> so, what else has been going on? Well, a year on from his death, Osama bin Laden is back in the news. New insights into Al-Qaeda strategy have been revealed in papers which were seized from Osama bin Laden's hideout in Pakistan after he was killed. The US have released hundreds of secret files found in bin Laden's lair. Most of them are about terror attacks, but the one that really caught my eye was this. Osama bin Laden had fantasies about marrying Whitney Houston. <laughs> How weird is that? I love the idea that when he got a bit fed up with terror, he'd go into his own special little room, <laughs> shut all the doors... <laughs> yeah, I wanna dance with somebody! How long have you been there? <laughs> long enough for summer. Long enough! <laughs> it wasn't just Whitney, he had other habits. A US official tells ABC News that a huge stash of pornography was discovered. There is no way to tell if Bin Laden looked at it, but it was found right in his bedroom. <laughs> What's this? <laughs> Osama Bin Laden, Osama Bin Wankin. <laughs> I tell you what, this brings a whole new meaning to the phrase Afghan hound. <laughs> <laughs> I like that joke. <laughs> what I want to know, what films was he watching? Well, luckily, I found a list of his favourites. You will not find these in blockbusters. The Suicide Bomber. <laughs> the War on Terrorism. <laughs> Jihad, Massive Tits. <laughs> but apparently his favourite was the mesmerising Tora Bora Hora. <laughs> she loves it back, Dora. <laughs> <laughs> it's an absolute classic. I know one guy watched it and he loved it. Ooh, Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> Over to Australia and a stuck toddler. Playful and curious like any three-year-old boy, little Noah Jeffrey has a taste for adventure. Or perhaps misadventure, getting himself trapped inside a vending machine yesterday afternoon. <laughs> he was stuck in a vending machine. So, did he start crying? Screaming for his mum? Oh, no. Generous Noah handing out toys and lollies to his friends. Isn't he great? He's like a toddler Robin Hood. <laughs> Fuck the dentist, have a curly whirly. <laughs> Even better, look at the reaction of his mates. All the other kids on the outside were encouraging him and laughing and telling him which toy they wanted. Oh, great, that's like a cute version of the London riots. <laughs> Give me the buzz light here, quickly, mate. The filth are coming. Come on. <laughs> that kid must be a god at his nursery. Just sat in a sandpit, surrounded by girls. Toys are us. Toys are fucking me. 
And which one of you babes is gonna give me a massage? I should warn you, I like my massage like I like my nursery rhymes, with a happy ending. <laughs> I'm the scariest little kid you've ever seen. <laughs> to be honest, I'm surprised he kept so calm in the machine. You know how excited kids get around toys. <laughs> Have a look at why this guy made the news. A Wisconsin man has made quite the name for himself. Not because of what he was arrested for, but because of, well, what he named himself. This is brilliant. Check out his name. We'd like for you to meet Bizao Dudu Zapati Bop Bop Bop. <laughs> Sounds like something Louis Armstrong shouts when he comes. Bizao Dudu Zapati Bop Bop Bop. <laughs> what a wonderful world. Here comes. <laughs> his name is brilliant, and so are his hobbies. According to Bezo's Facebook page, he's a member of the Orthodox Church of Jerry Garcia fans, and he enjoys thinking. <laughs> and what he enjoys thinking is, what's the stupidest fucking name I can come up with? <laughs> it isn't just me taking the piss, even the weatherman had a pop. Let's see how the guys in prison pronounce his name. <laughs> how harsh is that? By the time they're done, his ass will look like a yawning hippo. <laughs> you don't need asparagus to get what I'm driving at. <laughs> now, this is the part of the show I genuinely don't know anything about. There's going to be a mystery guest who's been in the news, and I have to figure out who that person is. So, please welcome my mystery guest. Um, I'm Ross, what was your name? Rachel. Rachel, nice to meet you. Can I sit here? Yeah, if you want to. <laughs> Quite uncomfortable. It is a bit. Mine actually moves, though. Well, how come mine doesn't move? Because mine's cooler. <laughs> well, how unfair is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's like we're a brother and sister... <laughs> ..and the family don't love me. Yeah. <laughs> Why doesn't mine move? Cos you're adopted. <laughs> <laughs> so, can you give me a clue about why you're in the news? Um... Well, what I do involves ropes. Involves ropes? Yes. Do you, uh, do you whip kids? <laughs> until they give you toys? No. No. I, I actually get whipped, though. You sometimes. get whipped? Yeah. <laughs> Will I be whipping you later? No. <laughs> you might, actually, maybe. We'll see. All right. <laughs> Back in the game. Right. <laughs> Um, OK, so I may be whipping you later. <laughs> to be honest, I'm not really fussed about the mystery guest. Let's just do that. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? I don't know. Um, so it's, it's got... I'm not... I'm, give me another clue. I'm nowhere near this. Um, equipment that I use can be used in the school playground as well. OK. Do you work out using kids' equipment? <laughs> no, I guess a, you could say you're that. A, uh, skip, skipping champion? I'm UK number one, yes. You're the UK number one skipper. There you go. <laughs> But it's like, well, what? Like sausage in a pan, sausage in a pan, turn them over, turn them over, sausage. What's that got to do with skipping? Because kids well, that are is in a the playground. Fucking curveball! How am I going <laughs> <I'm laughs> to guess that everything about this is just kids and there's two ropes here, <laughs> hanging down like spiders' dicks? And yet, <laughs> of course I didn't guess it. Anyway, nice to meet you. Um, <laughs> excellent. Can I? Can I? Uh, are we going to do some skipping? Let's do that. Do you want to see a skip? That'd be lovely. <laughs> Right. Okay, we've got to move the set first. Absolutely. Which way is it going? Back here. Right then. Okay. Thanks very much. Right. Yep. Um, first of all, though, I'm going to show you what I do. Okay. So you're going to have to stand way out the way. Absolutely. So you don't get whipped. <laughs> oh, nice. That's good. Oh, oh, oh. Well 
Right. And now to make a fool out of myself. I'm actually going to teach you tricks, though. Lovely. Look forward to it. Do you want to have a quick go on your own first? No. Have you ever tried skipping before? Yeah. Have you? Yeah. Not doing. <laughs> First trick, you ready? Yeah. It's called speed step. You're going to hop from one foot to the other each yeah. time the rope goes round. Yeah. So you're hopping like this. Let's get out of the way first. Then. <laughs> so hop. Fuck. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, that was it. You just I speed up the rope to go speed with Speed up the rope, right? What? There you go. <laughs> Right. But at the moment, you kind of got like an Irish fling yeah, going yeah. on. <laughs> Try and bring your knees up, that's okay, fine. Okay. okay, next trick. Uh, we're going to do something called a side straddle. All you're going to do is bring your feet apart, together. Okay. So it goes out, together, out, together. Oops. Oh. <laughs> 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 All right, you ready for the next one? It's really tiring, isn't it? Um, the next one doesn't involve jumping, so you'll be fine. It's not skipping, then. So... <laughs> what can I do? Right, go straight out in front of you. OK, and all you're going to do... <laughs> ..is you're going to flick it and catch it. <laughs> I've got a regular. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm going to do now is bring on two of my team members Sweet. and we're going to do something called Double Dutch. This is Becky and Gemma. Becky and Gemma. Hello, Becky and Gemma. So we're going to <laughs> You know in, like, action films, where yeah. there's one who's really good, who gets the gold and saves the day, there's always one that dies? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so true. He lost his head. So what have I got to do? Run into this, take the rope to the face, essentially. Actually, <laughs> we're going to go from right from basics with you, so, like, yeah. what we do with little kids. So you're going to stand in the middle. <laughs> you're going to hold my hands. You're going to jump at the same time as me. Don't look too scared, OK? Well, <laughs> my mum told me never to talk to strangers, yeah. let alone get involved in <laughs> some sort of rope fight. <laughs> Yep. And jump, jump, jump. Set, keep going. Well, that was absolutely fucking terrifying. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was lovely. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for my mystery girl! <laughs> Have you seen the latest food craze taken the US by storm? It's called the Cinnamon Challenge. The challenge works like this. A person is supposed to swallow a tablespoon of ground cinnamon in 60 seconds without drinking anything. The results usually look like this. I don't recommend that you do this at home. But I do recommend that you all watch this. So here's the cinnamon, all right? All right, here go.
is a wonderful story about a little boy called Joe and his heart. I met a remarkable young boy the other day. Joe Skerritt looks like any other three-year-old heading for his favourite ride in the local park. But Joe was born with a rare disease, which meant his heart was abnormally large. Now, after a heart transplant, he's improving every day. This is the Berlin artificial heart that kept Joe alive while he was on the waiting list for a transplant. He had two of these, one pumping blood through his body, the other through his lungs. And they kept him going, beating once a second for 251 long days. His parents, Mark and Rachel, know a donor family somewhere has saved Joe's life. You have no idea how you changed our lives and we, under, we can't comprehend your grief and what you've been through, but it was an amazingly selfless decision and you've done amazing things for our little boy, thank you. I'm eating my teeth. Munching on a block of cheddar, Joe told me he knows he's now got a new heart and it's just the right size. Yeah. I've got a little one. A little one? Yeah. I have another big one. And another little one. Lovely, isn't it? There you go. Thank you very much for watching Good News. Good night, my friends. Good night. <laughs>